The dramatic anthropocentric landscape of Wales attracted Piper. It accorded with the notion in romantic art that the landscape can be used as a focus for our own emotions. I felt then that I was seeing the mountains for the first time and, and seeing them as nobody has seen before. Each rock lying in the grass had a positive personality. For the first time, I saw the bones and, and structure and the lie of mountains. They had a place in, in North Wales, in Snowdonia, and, and John did a lot of work at one stage in Snowdonia. But I think, as people who have been to North Wales say, it, it rains too much. So <laughs> they got fed up with that uh, eventually. The Milfoy action of ice and frost, some done up like portmanteau with incised lines in place of the straps, large areas of quartz veining and speckling, tumbled and angled in all directions. Topography at its best is the interpretation of the world as a vision of the place. The, the best topographical paintings have the spirit of the place in the time. We're in the Tate Library and Archive. We're looking through a sketchbook here where he's obviously abstracting particular landscapes. A quick sketch. Ah, and this, this one is actually of Carnarvon. And you can see he's got the street here. He's drawn in the shapes of the buildings, more or less. He's written down the colours he wants, like red brick, green, slate. And we've got a church tower in the background here. And then down below it, he's actually abstracted this into blocks of colour, divided by strong black diagonals and verticals. So the red brick there has translated into this large red lump here, which is obviously splattered with his, with his finger. And here again, green equates to the green there. Today, castles are either whiskered ruins or tidied up ruins. The latter are more frequent. Carnarvon is a magnificent ruin which has been tidied. A short drive from Carnarvon and Piper discovered a waterfall even more spectacular than Gordale Scar. Pistol Raider. Romantic art is the result of a vision that can see in things something significant, beyond ordinary significance something that, that for a moment seems to contain the whole world. And when the moment is past, carries over some comment on life or experience besides the comment on appearances. We've got another sketchbook here. It's a Daler's sketchbook and he's written on the front, Mrs. Daler's Diary. And here we've got more abstract type works. They look as if they're sort of beach sketches, lots of blues and reds, blacks. And these look rather like some of his Anglesey Beach pictures. For example, there's, there's this one of Anglesey Beach, which was a lithograph. And we've got the same sort of pebble shapes punctuated by the red and the blue blobs. Another one, the same sort of theme. You can see the speed with which he's worked at these, the, the watercolour in the background and then sort of two centimetre thick brushed with big, bold black lines over it. And in fact, that's, that's probably even more similar apart from the fact that the blue mark here is now red. It's very similar. And here he's just thrown the brush at it. You can see the sort of splash marks of the wetness on the brush. That's a black and white version of the same. Again, it shows enormous speed and spontaneity. Pure abstraction is undernourished. It, it should be allowed to feed on a bare beach with tins and broken bottles. Dispirited by the continual rainfall in Snowdonia, the Pipers turned their attention to South Wales, and in 1962 they acquired a small cottage in Pembrokeshire, which became the subject of numerous pictures. Piper also developed a fascination for non-conformist chapels. 
We're looking at a work now which is of a Swansea chapel and is dated 1966, so two, two and a half years after the previous one. And That's it's correct. completely different in looks, isn't it? Is, it is, yes. There is development taking place with the photographic interest that John always had in making prints. And what you've got here is a two-colour print, black with greys and blue in the background, uh, representing not a conventional sky, but one which he made, um, making a film positive, which you can see on close examination with right. uh, so the films that we've got. And what you see here is in fact a photographic negative blown up to the right size of the potential print and actually it's the sort of quality of texture that interested him at the time, the drama of something almost lit with a very strong light from right to left. Here he's actually inserted a piece of photographic positive to give the architectural detail of the central window. Yeah. Now this is in a way is rather like drawing, but instead of using a pencil, you actually use collage pieces that are appropriate to your idea. Which goes back to his early years of using collage uh, and also photographs. Exactly that. But he's combining them two in a completely new way. Particularly in that way, yes. yes. So here we've got the lettering. Yes. It, it is actually letter set, isn't it? It's letter set, yeah. yes. It's wonderful. Needless but to say, Libby, we actually encouraged him to pursue his experimentation as much as possible because this makes the work artist-led to a degree that you normally don't get when you have reproductions. Well, and I suppose the relationship between the two of you would mean that you were both continually finding new ways of doing exactly things. Exactly. To sparking off the imagination. Yes. And then this one's interesting. This is Piper's own marbled paper, is that right? Yes, John was very fond of marbling paper and he took to using his own bath at home in order to promote the way in which it's done, this way <laughs> by him. But Mifanwi was pleased. <laughs> absolutely. And he was fascinated by the interaction of water and ink repelling substances, volatile processes which would evaporate and just allow the pigment to float on the surface. It suggests clouds, but in fact is something entirely different, mm. but represents accurately his own idea. So you get this juddling with typography, with the photographic textures of the facade of the building, and in the background you get the activity of this marbling. Do you think this willingness to experiment came from not having a complete artistic training, that it, it sort of gave him the space to experiment with technical I, advances? I, I would agree with you. So he was constantly reassessing his ideas as he was actually making the print and storing up information for future prints that would benefit from these situations. Yes. 